I have a conniption? What's this? Bacon! <laughs> uh, hello! Hello! I'm having a hard time containing myself. Get it together! I don't think I can. You can settle it. I know, there's a lot of butt, big butt in your face right now. It's too much. <laughs> so, um, it's been a while. We haven't, we haven't made a tutorial in a while. So I'm excited to get back to it. We're going to make pigs today and we have a supply pack to go along with our tutorial. And it's a really fun project because they're, they're not complicated shapes. Um, although it did take me a while to get pigginess. This is my first one. And I kept wanting to, every other animal that I make that the head is raised, the neck is set different and the head is up in the air and pigs are like, totally low set head. So then this was the second one, got a little bit better. And this is the third one, which I feel like is a better pig shape. And longer back and everything. Same thing with the piglets. Um, that's an early piglet. And then this one kind of got the, got the shape better. So I've figured out something <laughs> to share with good. you. They all look good to me. Yeah, I bet. So um, we have, like I said, we have the supply pack. We have created a bat for the kit that is um, a special pig color. It's similar to a flesh tone, but it's kind of like faded out and dirtied up a little bit. We didn't like roll it around in mud. We put a color, <laughs> a color in there that makes it just less pink and less um, pure. So I, I like it, I like it a lot and it's, and it's nice to work with. So we, uh, pigs, it's all about pigs today. I didn't have any pig jewelry or pig color clothes. Uh, so I did pigtails. Well, yes, it's very fancy. <laughs> fancy, I don't know if that's the word, but. It's great. It's in honor of the day. Uh, not only are we talking pigs and bacon here. Yeah. The internet is loaded with pig humor. I bet. It, it's a little out of control. <laughs> so, you're going to hit me with one oh, now? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. What? <laughs> Nobody's here. I, I think that was maybe me in my enthusiasm. <laughs> so, so, what do you call a pig that does karate? Pork chop. Yes! <laughs> That's right up my alley. It, it's I good like stuff. that one. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's, let's get started. Let's get started. All right. We're going to get started by opening up our supply pack. It makes one pig and three piglets. So the pig is made with the 14 gauge wire and the piglets are made with uh, the 22 gauge wire. Lots of core wool, just takes lots of wool to build these up. And then this is our um, pig bat. And then we've put a few colors in that you can um, just kind of play with for spots, for the feet. Um, this pig has some sandstone over top on the back. And this pig has, this is um, pale. Was that what it's called? I think so. Yeah. yeah. So it has some of that on the back. Just tones down the pink a little bit, especially on the older pigs. You could also do white. And then the, I've been using this gray on the feet. Um, if you wanted to use your sandstone on the feet, you could. You might not have enough to do the feet and the back. But you have enough gray to do all the feet and um, make a little two-tone spot with the gray and black if you wanted to. Okay, so what we need to do first is make the adult pig armature. So I'm going to get the other wires out of the way. One wire is um, 16 inches and one wire is 20 inches. So you want to pull the 16 inch wire to find the center. And then I just work my way back up. 
and then you're going to twist two and a half inches for the head. So two and a half inches from the tip and twist gently. You don't need a real tight twist here. So two and a half. And then find the center of your second wire. And do a twist um, on each shoulder. So the first wire, the V of it goes onto the base of the neck. And I have not positioned this into a head yet because I'm going to wait to see after I do the shoulders. So that's one and that's two. You want two full twists. After I do the shoulders, I want to see which position the head looks sets lowest in. So now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to twist these together two times. So that's one and that's two. Okay, normally my armatures would go this way, but see how high that puts the head. So I'm going to turn my armature this way so that the base of the neck is coming out underneath the second wire. And then I'll just press my feet down and bring these back. So this ends up being actually one and a half twists when you, when you do the armature this way. So now that I've got my head and neck down and my feet facing down, I'm going to bring together these two wires and just let them, hey, what? get out of there, Milo. Don't eat my little piggies. I'm going to let these two wires come together. Just let there be a triangle there. We have lots of videos that show um, how to make an armature. So I'm not giving quite as much detail as I normally would. We want the back to be four, about four and a quarter inches. Sorry, I'm hitting That's off. okay. And that's going to be from the arm. So from the arm to the end of the back, I'm going to give it another couple twists. Get a nice long back. So that's more like four and a half inches. But that's good. I want the back. I want to have grease. <laughs> I want the back wire to be at least four inches long, the back legs. So as long as you can twist your back, and they have really long backs, so as long as you can twist your back and still have four inches of wire, you're good. Okay, and then you're gonna cut, well, I'll hang on to this. You're gonna, we want the front legs to be three inches long with a loop. So it's good to cut them at about three and a half inches. And then I just cut the second one even. And then shape a little loop using about a half an inch. This little loop is going to be the spot where you thread your pipe cleaner to make the cloven hooves. Okay. So with the loop, we should be at three inches. Awesome. And then the back legs, we want to be three and a half inches long with the loop. So I was at four. So if I use a half an inch to make the loop, it should be good. No matter what, one of my armature legs always seems to. Okay. And then we're going to give them a little elbow about an inch down. So we've got an elbow and then two inches of leg elbow aims is a bend backwards and then we're going to give it a little knee and hock so forward bend about an inch and a half down from the back and then a backwards bend about an inch and a half up from the foot and then the head we want to give a rise the, to create the dome of the head, and then we want the snout to be about a healthy um, half an inch long 
so we can wrap a good a good snout. My love, you need to settle down. Okay, now we're gonna use the pipe cleaner to construct our um, split toes and get some pipe cleaner on the wire. Um, you find the center of one pipe cleaner and it's gonna take the whole length of the pipe cleaner. So make sure you keep it centered because um, you need the full, <laughs> there, that was not me, that was Milo. You need the full length for each side. So you can even just get both sides started make sure that you're in good shape. And then when you come down, you want to go through the loop. Am I good, Milo? Am I in focus? Yes, it's all okay. good. You want to get through the loop. It's just like making tiny fingers, except we're just making two. So I'm going to make about a quarter inch toe. And then I'm going to, so I went over top of the metal loop. And now I'm going to come under from the bottom and then I'm going to do another quarter inch toe. So as long as you have enough pipe cleaner to fold the wire back, you're good. You just never want, um, you don't want any pokey wire sticking out. It doesn't matter which one you do first. So I'm going to do one. This time I'm coming under the metal, so now I've got to go over. And then the other. And the other one doesn't have to return around the metal. The wool holds it in place. So we'll do the back legs, and one pipe cleaner is good for the back legs too. Even though they're longer, we're not spanning the shoulders here, so it works the same way. Convenient how my armature works perfectly with one pipe cleaner. This is true. So we're gonna go down a leg through the loop, make one quarter inch toe, and then the other one. I like these pipe cleaners, they're not as fuzzy. They're a lot of fuzz sticking out. Oh boy, my stomach's growling. I thought maybe that was me. I could really go for a BLT. Hey, what do you get when you play tug of war with a pig? Tug of war. I don't know what. Pulled pork. <laughs> okay. Just to go with the food theme. So leave uh, two inches sticking up off the back. Wrap forward gently. Come un under between the legs, go around the head, and then just as long as you have enough wire to fold it over the tip of the nose. I'm not feeding it through the loop or anything. I'm just bringing it down and folding it over so that the farthest thing out is, is pipe cleaner. And then give your um, pipe, pipe cleaner tail a little bend just at the end because it looks long, but by the time we get all that butt on there and then um, you make a little curly cue out of it it's good so that's the pig while we're doing armatures let's I'm gonna go ahead and do the um, the piglets so we need to cut these at 8 inches they're 18 inches long so that's gonna give you um, an 8 inch piece and a 10 inch piece This can be tricky because of the cloth. So I use scissors. You use scissors. On the 18, uh, up to the 22 gauge, I can use the scissors. So these are my eight, and these should be 10. Good. Okay, so find the center of your eight inch piece. Twist about one and three quarters inches for their little head. And then find the center of your 10 inch piece. It's made the same way, except no. 
cloven feet. We just do little tiny wrapped feet. And then I'm gonna twist, let's see, okay, I'm gonna see if I can build the armature the other way so that the head is set low. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put this on the back of the neck and then twist it one and a half. That's weird. One and a half. Okay, that kind of worked. Line these up, bring them together, twist the back two inches from the front arm. Okay, and then give the head the same treatment, a little upwards bump and a little snout. Leave these un, um, don't make any bend in the end of the wire yet because what I've been doing is with the pig bat, wrapping the leg once, coming all the way down and then bending the wire and finishing the wrap so that the ends of the toes are nice and um, covered. So I'm going to leave this as is for now, but you're going to do that three times. Rewind. Do it three times. The first thing that we need to... Why do I have another pipe cleaner? Oh. Um, there's another pipe cleaner. Don't panic. Just because in case, you know, you didn't... You weren't able to work out all the toes with the single pipe cleaner. Um, but you should... It, so, hang on to that. Do something fun with it. I don't know. What could you make? You could... You could make a fish. You could make a fish. <laughs> Anyway, the first thing we need to do is wrap the toes, which is not my favorite thing, so it's good to get it out of the way. Um, I want to work with this gray, and I'm going to take, um, let's see, how can I, I think the best thing to do is to split it in half lengthwise. You have about an eight inch piece in your kit. And then split that in half this way. So now you have two four inch pieces and then split those in half lengthwise. Just gonna give you a good piece to start with. Let's stretch it out a little bit, just so it's not such a chunk. And just gonna stay at the bottom of the leg. It doesn't matter if you wrap the leg a little bit, you should, to get it anchored. It's gonna get covered with pink. And what I do is I pick a toe, and I wrap down the toe, and then I turn around, and I go back up. And then I can come over here and do the other one. And then once I've gotten both toes wrapped, I can just do a little figure eight, go around one, come over the top, go around the other, just to fill them in a little bit. That was a good amount of wool. I like it when I guess right. I'm not guessing. I'm extremely practiced. Okay, I'll do it one more time with you and then you can do I'm really the zooming. other two. Okay, good. Really zoom. I'm trying to get the pig out of the way here. Go around the foot to get started. I'm left-handed. You're going to have to turn this around in your brain. But if you're right-handed, you're still going to want to I think wrapping away from you gives you the right kind of motion and pull, whether you're left or right-handed. So I'm going to pick a toe and go down. See how thin I'm keeping my, my strand? I'm not letting it get super wide like it is back here. And I give it a little tug to get it tight. Then I'm going to the other side. And then I'm going to do a little crisscross over each to bring it together a little bit. It takes practice, this, the feel of the wool, how much tension. Um, so if this is your first, this is a, kind of an ambitious first project, 
But um, if it's your first, understand that every time you make something, um, you're going to get better at it. Okay, and do your other two. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is just start building, building. Before we do, let's get um, pink on this tail so that it's already there so that when it starts to get covered up, you're not trying to go back and, um, and wrap it. So this is a bat. It's basically like really, really thick roving because it, it's, um, all the fibers are aligned, but it's not pulled into um, a thin strand. But you can, you can just take a section and make it, make it more like roving. But for this tail, we wanna work with a real little, about four inch skinny piece. And I just start at the bottom Keep your wool flat and tight as you wrap. My hand that's holding the armature follows the other hand down the tail. And then, and then it comes back down. So I just want to get a good, tight, thin layer on there. What is a pig's favorite color? Um, blue. Now I'm questioning whether this is a color. <laughs> Why? What is it? Mahogany. Is that a color? Mahogany is a color. Okay. Mahog... Because it has hog in it? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. If these are the quality of jokes that are on the internet, then we could start our own. We could start yeah. our own joke, joke company. Good. They're very, very good. Okay, core wool, you need lots of it. This is our off-white chunky core, and we're gonna start with about a healthy four inch piece. Usually I just take my hand, grab it, and pull. So I call that four inches. It's probably more like six if you stretch it a tiny bit. And then split it into quarters, and one of these quarters will go down each leg. So first time around the armature, you're just trying to get a layer of wool on there. Oh my gosh, Milo, it's been so long since we've done a tutorial like this. It's been a while. Yeah. I'm not gonna get too thick around the bottom of the leg right now because it's still gonna get um, top coat on it. And if I wrap well, I don't even have to felt it, needle felt it because it just sticks. So I'm getting down here. I don't need quite all of this. So I'll just pull the extra off. Piece of cake, 30 seconds. You say that, people are going to get angry. <laughs> it's not that easy for everyone. I don't think I could make it look not easy at this point. I've, it's a part of my, it's become a part of my brain. So people need to just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. This one I'm gonna felt a little bit because it got a little bit thick down here. Just wanna make sure it stays and that I don't have to redo what a done did. So when you're working on a leg, you gotta get the other legs out of the way. Sometimes I straighten the leg out a little bit and then reshape it after I've wrapped it. But we just have a whole lot of wool to get on here. Okay, now I'm gonna take a bigger piece more like an eight inch, four, six, eight, eight inch piece. I'm gonna split it in half lengthwise. And I like to give it a little tug so that it kind of smooths out, just gently pulling, it's not such a chunk. And then starting right in front of the hind legs, I'm gonna go around the body with one 
whole piece. So I'm not traveling too quickly, I'm kind of giving it a lot of overlap so that you know it thickens up pretty quick. Then with the second one we're going to do the chest wrap. If you have done animals with me before, you know how this goes. If not, I'll show you now. So I like to go around once and when I come over the back, I go over a shoulder and then I come under the opposite armpit. So basically I've come across the chest. Now I'm going to go over the back again and to complete the pattern, I'm going to go under this armpit and over the opposite shoulder. So I've made an X on the chest. And then the rest of the wool, I'm just going to wrap around the body. Okay, let's get another 8 inch piece. Split it in half lengthwise. Do one on the body again. Concentrating it a little bit towards the back of the pig to start to even up this body shape. And then the other one, we're going to get some wool on the head. So I'm going to start at the base of the neck, go around. I'm just going to follow the wire, even though it's got some bends in it. It's a little chunky to work with, but get a good, tight wrap around the snout. We're really going to build on this, so you want a good foundation here. So I'm going around three or four times and see how smooth and tight I'm pulling it. I'm really tugging it. Then I'm going to go back. Oh, warping him or her. Okay, now let's build up the tops, start to build up the tops of the legs a little bit and join them with the body. So we're going to work with a four inch piece and I think we should um, split it into quarters, I have an idea. So now I've got four pieces. I'm going to stretch them out. So pigs have a nice little hock. <laughs> um, and we should go ahead and get that built up a little bit. So I'm stretching this out so it's manageable. And I'm going to start at the top of the thigh and come down. And then when I want to exaggerate this bend a little bit. And then I want to go around the top bone, come through the center right here and go around the bottom bone. And you if if you're working along with me, maybe just watch this once and then um rewind. I'm never wrapping the point. I'm skipping the point. And then when I do that, and now I'm going to go back to the top and now I'm going to go back to the bottom. It builds up a nice little triangular shaped joint here. And I'm going to go back to the top. And I think that's it. I'll go back one more time, but I've got it real thin now. So I've got it real thin just to finish it out. Alright, we'll do the other side. Sometimes I like to work with, if my needles are strong, I work with two needles in my tool because that way I can get right along the edges of wires and stuff. Okay, so we're going to exaggerate this bend a little bit. I keep getting it a little too low. There we go. And I want to get a nice meaty ham hock, so I'm going to... Mm. <laughs> Skip the point and go around each angle. That's it. If 
you just keep smoothing out the wisps of your piece, it'll all just blend together. Okay, now we can concentrate on the tops of the legs. But before we do, let's use these other two four inch quarters that we had and just start at the top of the front leg and come down and concentrate, like linger at the top a little bit so that it gets built up and then come down. So we basically we're trying to taper as we go down. They don't have really have a knee or anything that shows. So we're just trying to build that up and let it taper down. Building up the top of the leg. This was a bigger piece than the other piece somehow. And then I'm letting it taper down. We're still putting the pink color on top of this. So I don't want it to get too, too big. Okay, now let's work with a six inch piece. Um, see if you can split it into thirds because we can use one for each hind leg and then we can use one to do a little more to the head. So these two feel more the same. Okay. I wanna build the thigh up so I'm going to wrap the top of the thigh. I'm gonna skip the bump, kind of similar to what we were doing on the hock, and then wrap the top of the thigh. And now I'm just gonna go around the whole thing and bring it all together. So just starting to build that up a little bit. I like to put it down and felt from the inside of the thigh out. That way I can kind of start to flatten it out. I leave this wrap a little on the looser side so that it doesn't turn into a great big tight log. It has a little bit of, has a little bit of give this way. So I'll show you again. I'm gonna go down here and then up here. So it's a little bit of a kind of a figure eight. And then I'm just gonna go around the whole thing to smooth it out. And then stab. The other day, a pig invited me to see his new home. Oh, really? He did, yes. How was that? Uh, it was actually quite stylish. <laughs> you should be you should be pretty comfortable in a pigsty, Milo. I, I won't take offense to that. Mm -hmm. It's my it's my issue, not yours. <laughs> okay, so we have a little bump in the head, and we're gonna do the same kind of figure eight technique here to start to build this up with our other six inch piece. So I'm gonna go around the back of the head, come through the bend and go around the front of the head. And if I keep doing that, stretch this out a little bit, it starts to fill in that space. It's kind of crazy that by skipping it, you fill it in. It doesn't make logical sense. It's like a herring bone. I know, it doesn't make fun. <laughs> well, you're skipping here, and every time you cross here... The so place it, you want the wool, you skip. No, you don't want the wool up here. You want it in here. So you, you never wrap here. Right. But it keeps crisscrossing right here, which right. fills it up. I use it, that technique, all the time. So much. Okay, more wool. Okay, let's see, what do we need now? So many pieces. <clears throat> let's get another good one on the stomach. So let's do, let's do, let's do an eight inch piece. Let's split it, split it in half lengthwise. Stretch it out. 
and just do a nice big wrap all the way around the body between the legs between the legs meaning from here to here all right good that's good just starting to get that built up more and then with the other eight inch piece Split that in half again. So now we're working with an eight inch quarter. And we wanna bring um, the legs together to the body a little bit. They're a little bit um, disconnected right now. So what I do is I start on the body, just start on the back. I go around the leg one time and then I return to the back. That just pulls it pulls it all together. The rest of it I'm going to go around the rest of the body. So I'll show you on the other side. I start on the back. I'm going to go around the leg one time. I'm going a different direction this time. That's okay. It ends up symmetrical. And then I'm going to return to the back. And then just wrap that around and felt that on.